circles are basically known for being in the UK, but they're found all over the world as well, including Portugal, Spain, some in Quebec Le Tepe, which are supposed to be 11,000 years old, and Michael Tellinger thinks he's found millions of them in the south of Africa. So we've come to one in France, not far from Blandas. There's not many here in France, but this is one of the most complete, with about 40 or 50 stones still standing, and some that are uh, on the ground too. Now the most striking thing about this one is that in the centre here, there's a standing stone, and it's the tallest stone of all of them here. So I'm about 1.8 metres tall, here is two meters or just a bit over it's right in the center it's equidistant to all the sides from looking around here it's uh, got some it's got a possible cut mark but it's hard to tell because all these stones around here have been eroded quite a lot One stone there that's uh, different to the rest, look. These are all sort of white grey granite looking rocks. And then this one, it's sedimentary, really brown looking. Now is that the only one in the circle? There's another one over there, I think. I wonder if they're positioned in a certain like part of the circle for some reason. This one seems like it's been a weathered a lot, doesn't it? I mean, I'm not sure if these were originally this size, but... Some fallen stones. Now coming up to a... Uh large red stone as well which seems to attract people to it. I've seen a couple of people coming up here meditating on this stone. Quite a lot of erosion on that one too isn't it? There is. And then another large fallen stone down here. Probably broken I think. Too hard. Yeah, looks like it. It's a slight tingly feeling. Getting an energy rush. Yeah, nothing like that one we saw at Avebury, which was, you know, you could feel yeah. that go all up your arm. But there's a sort of the end of my fingers is tingling a bit, so maybe this is a good spot for energies. I think it is. Let's go and have a rest up against it. Stonehuggers.com. Hey? hey, that's a good thing. We'll do that on the website. Stonehugging. Yeah, stonehugging. Well, we get arrested now. Probably nowadays, molesting a rock. <laughs> Driven about 10 kilometres from the last stone circle we showed you to one that's a little less complete and it's an area full of dolmen and standing stones, there's quite a lot of megaliths in this area. See one over this bay. So this is the start of the stone circle. It's slightly slight raised, slightly like raised, it's like a bit of a ridge. There's, 
see the tree line marks it out really well. This is the largest stone in the circle. That's a bit over maybe. And this is probably the best place to show you the curvature of the line of stone. And how big is this? These are about 60 meter wide, this circle. Yeah. It's yeah, so smaller than the last circle we went to visit. Yeah. Uh, there's a few less stones. It's in a nice setting other than it's encased by wires everywhere, which is a bit annoying. There's not much else to say really. No idea when they're built. The official version is they're probably 5,000 years old and people used to come here to exchange with some wood or something. Thought we'd finish up here close to Mont Blanc where it's bloody freezing with a stone circle. And this stone circle you can only see a couple of weeks of the year because it's up so high on the San Bernardino Pass. And it's right on the France and Italy border. It's about 72 di... 72 di... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? <laughs> it's about 72 meters in diameter about 50 stones but they're all tiny as you can see this is probably the three biggest stones here Now we're going to end the film here because this is where Italy starts, right in the middle of the stone circle. And we're going to head that way and check out and see if they've got any pyramids in this country.